Welcome to our How to channel. My name is Zaya. I'm a Microsoft FTE. My HR requires me to say that. And today's video, we wanted to help you how to choose a suitable laptop for you. So if you're struggling and can't decide which one is really good fit for you, this is the video. And we always have a subtitle and as well as the time steps. So whichever matters the most for you, you can actually press it and save your time. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like and share with your friends. And let's get to it. So first thing first, I would like to ask you, what are you using this laptop for? Are you a student? Are you a college student or K-12? Or are you an employee? Uh, what's your major what is your professional as well as are you just using this for fun so based on those questions your decision will shift around so keep that in mind and let me know in the comment as well and the second thing you need to think about is a budget so 2023 laptop statistics says that between laptops cost six hundred dollars to all the way to four thousand dollars and in that it goes variety of different ones. So you have to decide, okay, if, for example, let's say I'm a content creator. So I'm using this for personal matters and I only can afford two grand that can get paid for my credit card for zero interest. So I can pay it off eventually in 24 months, etc. So make sure your laptop does not burden you financially third thing we need to talk about is how do you want to use it meaning do you want two in one do you want touch screen or you just want to type in do you want to draw on it etc so those questions based on it you can choose it and so there's a lot of good actually laptops you can actually use it two in one you can separate it you can plug it back and you say the regular laptop you can twist it around it and draw things so like i said what are you using this for? Uh, fourth thing we need to talk about is what kind of operation system would you like to use and you are comfortable with. So there are three uh, operation system uh, provides for laptops. Uh, one, obviously Windows. It's the most variety of laptops can be given to you. And second is Mac OS. Uh, as all of you know, it's a little bit pricey to be honest. And the third one is the Chrome OS. I know especially in K-12 and college students are using it. Um, it's not bad, actually. It's not really a bad uh, choice. So depending on that, which uh, operation system you're comfortable, you can actually choose one. Next thing we do need to consider about is the screen features. So first, let's talk about do you want to have a laptop that you can touch screen or not? So if you want touch screen, definitely Mac OS are out of the um, choice. And then uh, the reason why I'm asking is uh, majority of the time uh, people need a touch screen. Uh, it's easier. And uh, plus if you're an artistic person, you zoom things, you draw things. And if you are receiving documents and needs to sign it, touch screens are pretty useful. Um, so if you need a touch screen, you should look for more Windows based laptops uh, and comes too but windows are have the best ones so far from my experiences uh, and the next thing we should talk about is a uh, screen size how big the screen needs to be for you uh, mo most of the people 14 um, is good 12 to 14 inches are doable you can carry in your normal backpack they're light uh, but if you need a bigger ones you can actually get the bigger ones. Uh, I do have laptops that are 13 and 16 inches. The reason why I have bigger one is I'm a content creator and I need a bigger screen to edit it. So those are the things you need to consider about it. But just because you have a bigger screen, that doesn't mean your laptop is better or functionally good. It's just more the preference side from your end, how you do your job. Uh, with that being said, resolution is another thing to consider about. If you're a college student and you just need to write essays or do your homework, you don't really need a good resolution for that. But if you're a content creator like me, 
resolution is important, um, especially when you're editing videos. And next thing is battery life. Since we talk about screen, more of the screen is up. It's using energy and the battery goes out faster. Do you really need to have a laptop that stays for 12 plus hours? Or do you really work on computer more than eight hours? Um, you gotta ask yourself, how much am I using this laptop? Let's get deeper down to technical side. So we gotta talk about the processor. Uh, a lot of people talk about like, oh, my computer is Intel i7 or they say mine is M1 and people are like, what the heck is that, right? Uh, so Intel is the most variety of laptops have that and they're pretty powerful. And the latest ones are like i9, Intel, and usually people use that for gaming. So if you just need it for school, uh, work, personal matters, i7 is pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't complain on that. But the next thing is um, I, Mac iOS, they created their own uh, processor, started with M1, but the latest one is M2. Um, so far, so good, mm, but time will tell. Uh, not bad, not bad. And another um, processor we have is an AMD. Uh, they have a lot of different types of ones, um, but they're not too powerful as the other two. Uh, so if you're just using it for personal matters and that doesn't take a lot of power of the processor, why not choose the AMD? So those are the different types of ones, the easier way to explain it. And then you can actually choose which one you prefer to. Uh, next thing we gotta talk about is RAM. Uh, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Um, you will see in your computer, they will always talk about like 16 gigabytes, 32 and 64, so on, right? The reason why they're telling you this is what RAM does is like in a word, say random access memory, it's a temporary store and access that it like immediately. So for example, when you're opening your app, uh, when you running into your, um, Chrome's websites, um, editing documents, that's when the RAM is working, right? And people ask, what kind of uh, gigabyte RAM should I use? Definitely four gigabyte is too low. 16 is okay. Uh, ideally 32 is to go if you use a lot of application to work with. Let's say, uh, for example, I'm a content creator, um, 16 to 32 is pretty good, uh, but 64 is kind of killing it, it's too much, unless you're streaming and playing video game. Uh, so go with the 16 if you really wish it, 32, especially with the Mac, if you drop from uh, 30 to 16, there's a $400 difference, so uh, something to think about it. Last but not least, we'll talk about storage. Hard drive, solid state drive, um, the difference is, is, of course, how they look bigger, right? Hard drives are a much bigger component um, and more manual way works, but solid state drive SSDs are smaller and um, it's just that it makes things look easier and they function faster. And for SSD, uh, more you higher go, it costs more. Uh, but with the, especially with the cloud, I don't see the reason to get uh, bigger. Uh, even though I have a lot of uh, content that I need to edit and save, none of my content saved on the computer. They're all on my cloud. So if you already have a cloud services, let's say you have OneDrive or Google Drive or your iCloud and saves things there, you don't need a bigger space for your computer. Um, that's another thing that people always trigger and they're like, oh no, I do really need to have a bigger space because I have a lot of documents that needs to be saved and stuff. And when the laptop breaks down, you can't get it. I mean, luckily sometimes it can recover, but not fully. 
But if you save everything on the cloud, you actually can get back to it and you wouldn't lose anything about it. So everything in the cloud, you don't need to spend for one terabyte, two terabytes, the how much they're offering it, you don't need it. Um, but it depends, of course. Uh, if you do not want to use uh, cloud services, then definitely you might need a one terabyte, two terabytes that you're looking for. And I remind you more the higher storage goes that they will charge you more. And eventually you will reach out to capacity and you need to extend that and paying them more for that. Um, some people do just save things in their hard drive and saves it, uh, but it's not a guarantee. It's not going to go bad. And there's no guarantee it will get stolen or you forget somewhere or any kind of like natural disaster happens and then it touches your hard drive and you know destroys it there's nothing to go back so that's why i'm really big on cloud services and last thing i hope after all these questions i asked you and information given you have chosen the most suitable laptop for yourself that are affordable and nails your needs Thank you for watching our video. I hope it was very useful for you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you have a feedback, welcome. I would love to hear that. And um, let us know what kind of videos would you like to watch uh, next time. And uh, we'll see you later. Peace out.